All across the planet, the 1920s was a very decadent decade. In the United States, it was the Roaring Twenties. In France, it was called Enifol, or the crazy or silly years. Globally, this was brought around by economic boom post the First World War and before the crash of the stock market. You had things like cinemas popping up with silent movie stars and people were actually able to go and participate in sporting events. Like, you know, the peasantry class could actually go and watch sports and be entertained by sports. And in fact, in Paris in 1924, they held the Olympic Games. However, for one town in the southwestern part of France, there was a pickpocket whose crimes would unravel a rather interesting story. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, a very, very, very special thank you to our patrons. If it was not for you, we would not be able to do what we do. I am considering adding a special perk to the patrons for $10 and up to have a Zoom call meeting once a month. If that is something my patrons would like to do, then please let me know down in the comment section below. If you would like to become a patron, there is also a link for you down in the description box below so you can join in if you would like to. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce and today on Mystery Monday, we are going to talk about the notorious cat eater of 1925. Before we get started, yes, I am back in my kitchen again. I am pre-recording this video on Friday for Monday. Hopefully by the time you see this video, you will have already watched our video that I recorded earlier with Tarot by Janine and Tom from Tom Numbers or The Psych Club. After we were done filming, I decided that I would pop on and go ahead and record this video so I could devote my weekend to some research for some other projects that we're working on for this channel. For those who participated in our first ever live on Thursday, I had a blast with you. That was so much fun and I really appreciate everybody who participated. It's such an honor to get to know you guys. I feel like this is all a community. We're all just walking each other home. We're all in this together and we're all trying to get through this timeline that we all find ourselves in together. With that being said, I am going to start doing lives on Friday evenings. We are going to start going through the raw material. That's RA or the law of one. This is something that my boyfriend is actually more familiar with than I am. So I'm going to spend this week looking through some different pinpoint or points of the material to go through with you guys on Friday. It will be Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm looking at doing maybe 90 minutes to two hours. I considered doing it like Tuesday or Thursday, but most people said they prefer to do it on a Friday or a Saturday night, which I totally understand because that is the beginning of the weekend, so therefore you're probably a little bit more relaxed. Once we schedule the live, I will go ahead and put in the description box for the scheduled live a lot of the website links that we're going to be looking over. So you can go ahead and look at those as well or follow along, along on your own computer while we're doing the live. Lut Igeron is a province in the southwestern part of France. The city of Agen is the largest city in this province. Now, in 1920s, 
The population of this city was about 23,000 people. While shopping at the outdoor market, a woman had her pocketbook pickpocket by another woman by the name of Denora Galliou. After being apprehended by authorities, Denora told them that she needed to pickpocket in order to feed her two twins that happened to be with her in the market. Now, the police thought this was odd because the two children that she had with her were very obviously different ages and therefore not twins. Upon investigating further, the police unraveled a strange mystery revolving around a woman named Denora who had a habit of abducting children. When they went to her house to further investigate it, they found four other children in a very dilapidated and disgusting nursery. It was registered to her seven other children that she claimed to be hers, but the police found that she was in unlawful possession of these kids. Come to find out that Denora was married to a local doctor. And upon finding these seven children, they ended up finding even more children, a total of 15. By the time this case would end, there would be about 20 children that Denora had possession of at some point in her life. So who was this Denora? Well, the information that came out about her throughout the trial would shock even her husband. Yes, her husband, who was also charged with all these unlawful possessions of children, even though he thought some of the kids were actually his. Now, the authorities did examine Denora, and it looked from her body that she had never given birth to any children. So what was going on? Well, the Denora was this fair-haired, pretty woman who told everybody that she was from nobility. She also told people that she was a Hindu princess whose great-great-grandfather was a Maharaja. You would think that a fair-haired woman telling you that she was the descendant of a Maharaja would make you scratch your head, but apparently this line worked on her current husband, who was a local doctor. You see, Denora had been shacking up or living with this doctor for quite some time. And like any woman in the 1920s, living with a man was not looked upon as decent. And so in order to get this doctor to marry her, she faked a pregnancy and also told this doctor that her great-great-granddaddy, the Maharaja, would be sending them a bunch of money and a bunch of gifts upon their wedding. Well, the con worked, and Denora, after nine months, presented a a baby to this doctor that he thought was his child. And after they were married, it was just quite handy that this Maharaja and his boat coming to France got captured by the British, not once, but twice. Over time, more and more and more children would appear at the house. Some, again, she claimed were their children, and some she claimed that she had adopted from poor people because they could give these children a better life. But here's the thing. This isn't the first time Denora had done this. You see, by the time she met the doctor, she had already done this before to another gentleman whom she claimed to have had about three children with, three children that she brought into her relationship with this doctor. So here this doctor, who's been charged with the same crimes his wife has been charged with, thinks that he has these children, that they've adopted these other children, and he has these like three stepchildren that were his wife's kids from another relationship. The first man that she did this to was a man named Germont. Now, Germont traveled a lot for work, and Donora was shacking up with him too. And because he was away so often, it wasn't like Donora had to actually fake a pregnancy. She could just get a baby and claim it was their baby when the man came back in hopes to secure a life with this man. And in fact, one of Denora's 
oldest children, a girl named Micheline, had to testify in her mother's trial. And can you imagine? She was on the stand learning that her mother wasn't her mother and her father wasn't her father and her two little brothers weren't actually her biological brothers. Talk about some crazy, crazy trauma. You see, it was Micheline who gave Denora, her mother, the title of the cat eater, which is of course what the newspapers ran with all over France. She claimed that her mother would take the neighbor's cats and use the cats as meat to feed her and all of her children. Now, it's easy to think that perhaps Denora just had some mental instabilities and just really wanted to have a bunch of children or was trying to secure a husband or whatnot. However, it seems to be even more sinister than that. Throughout the course of the, the trial, it was found that Denora would take over or kidnap these children and rent them out to people. So basically, Denora in the 1920s was a trafficker of children. One of the most disturbing things Nora would do is that she would give babies to poor women so that the poor women would have or be more prosperous in their begging. She would starve the children so that they would cry while they were with these women draped in old blankets so that people, it would tug on people's heartstrings, right? And something else Denora would do. She would take a walnut and or any type of shell of a nut and put a spider inside of it. And then wrap the walnut with the spider inside of it in the child's eye. So that the spider would bite the eye and make it swell. Of course, causing the child a lot of pain and discomfort. Once the eye was infected, she would rent the baby out to these peasantry women to go begging, of course, taking a percentage of the money that these women brought in. Now, out of all 20 children that were associated with Denora, some of them had gone missing over time. Now, a lot of them were found by the police. They had been sold into workhouses and all sorts of really crummy situations, but one had died because of neglect. Now, of course, this case was absolutely sensationalized by the people of France. We always think of women as being more nurturing. We always, I think, feel safer with children around women. However, when women are psychopaths and they do horrible things, their crimes seem to be almost worse than their male counterparts. Now, Denora was found guilty and she was sentenced to four years in prison. This was not the first time Denora had been arrested and thrown in prison. And in fact, I will link an article down in the description box below of other times, Denora had found herself in the clinker. Now, luckily, her husband was acquitted. From all the articles that I read on this case, there wasn't many, especially in English, and I don't, I don't speak French, but her husband really seemed to be like an innocent victim in all this, and I my heart goes out to him. I know he's probably no longer with us, but can you imagine just what he was going through? He literally thought some of these kids were his. He thought he was in this happy marriage. He himself was a doctor, probably making a pretty decent living, but his wife was out pickpocketing money and scamming people and stealing children and trafficking them for a little side hustle to make her own money and have her own power. He also, throughout the trial, had to learn that his wife was not the woman she said she was. She was not the great great granddaughter of some Maharaja and she was not nobility at all. So I am somewhat grateful that the jury did find him innocent so he was able to go and deal with his trauma and lick his wounds. My heart also goes out to all of the children that were involved in this case and of course all the parents who had their children taken from then. But the mystery still remains. Who was Denora? Denora was not her legal 
real name. In fact, she had gone by many identities. And of course, back in the 1920s, we didn't have the sophisticated systems that we do now in our jails where we can figure out who people are really. And almost a hundred years later, we still don't know who she really was. In my opinion, she was probably just some French woman born to average parents, maybe in an average background. And because of the atmosphere of the 20s, of how decadent it was, she tried to get hers where she could. Unfortunately, that involved the trafficking of children. So what do you guys think? Had you heard this story before? And if you have, and you know more details about this story, please leave that information in the comments below. If you're from France and you know about this story of this crazy cat eater, kidnapper, trafficker, I would love to hear your opinion on this story. All right, guys, thank you so much for sitting through this video. The next video we drop will probably be Wednesday with our recap from David Zublik's channel from the Dark Outpost the night before. Please remember, I will be on the Dark Outpost tomorrow night to start our new missing gospel, which is the Gospel of Q. I'm super excited about going through this gospel. We had such a wonderful time going through the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, and now we're going to be looking at its counterpart part, which is again the Gospel of Q. Of course, we will also have a new story up for you guys on Friday morning and we will do being be doing our live on the raw material on Friday evening. Janine is out of town this week, so there will be no video with Janine and Tom. If you have not seen the vi video with Janine and Tom from Friday, please go ahead and watch that. It was a fantastic show, but she and Tom will be back the very next week to get in some of, into some of the crazy current events that are happening in our world. I hope you guys all have a fantastic Monday and a fantastic week ahead of you. Thank you so much to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase the opening song, there is a link in the description box down below. And thank you so much to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys today. I will talk to you soon. Bye.